come up in the future. Uh, what can foreign missions do in this kind of situation to address quest for information in matters like this? Oh, thank you very much. First of all is that, uh, uh, you know, from diplomatic perspective, I've also had a lot of people, you know, bombard questions as to how the, you know, international community will perceive Nigeria on this issue. First of all is that, um, as a matter of uh, rule, uh, you are not expected to double with the politics of any country. Their internal politics is their internal politics. For example, I'm Nigeria envoy. I'm Nigeria's envoy to Burundi. I can't come here and start, uh, you know, getting involved or commenting on issues uh, in the internal politics of a country. That's totally unacceptable, and uh, no country actually will take that. So, from that from that point of view, everybody is clear on what they are supposed to be doing. However, with respect to uh, issues of how do missions help in addressing these kind of issues, it's not a, a normal issue. I mean, when I studied in the U.S., for example, they requested that I, I send them my certificate anyway from University of Nigeria. So can they said they have no business with that certificate. Now, what they require is my transcript. And not only should I, am I allowed to send the transcript to them, I was asked to send that transcript to a company called West that evaluates transcripts. Nigeria's GPA is 5, 5.0. America's GPA is 4.0. So they ha I had to send my transcript to Wes. Wes had to evaluate the, the transcript and converted it to what the American system will understand. So this is obviously what happens. The education system is different in both countries. And like I said, if you have been exposed to this information, then your appreciation of what is going on will become a lot easier for you. You know, so as far as we're concerned, foreign missions have no business with, they cannot, the foreign missions can authenticate document for you, which is obviously done at the foreign affairs headquarters, Ministry of Foreign Affairs headquarters. What the missions would obviously do would be a go between to help you deal with issues. But issues relating to Nigerians having studied abroad and they are the kind of, uh, you know, papers they have legally, official, they, those are actually private issues that the missions have no business with whatsoever. All right, so because this case now has some sort of international dimension, what impact do you think it will have on Nigeria's global reputation? Well, I've, I've mentioned this before. Um, you, you know, again, that uh, under normal circumstances, the pol every country is actually on their own with respect to politics. Uh, we're a sovereign nation. Whatever happens to us is a political issue between the... Uh, you know, the ruling party or the president and the opposition party. That's obviously the way everybody will see this. I don't, uh, you know, it'll feel a, a lot of people have argued that, uh, you know, once there is this suspicion, there is this and there is that. But I believe that information available uh, to the public is enough to indicate that uh, there shouldn't actually be any source of worry. However, like I said, you wouldn't uh, stop anybody from... Uh, having and drawing any kind of conclusion. I mean, the information is there. Like I said earlier on, uh, whoever that uh, wants to use it in the negative can. Whoever that also wants to use it in the positive can. But at the end of the day, the law courts are there to help us, uh, you know, bring clarity to some of these issues. As far as we're concerned, uh, Nigeria is a very, uh, is, is a country that is uh, respected both within the continent and outside the continent, regionally and internationally. So I believe that... Uh, the president is, uh, has rolled out his foreign policy and trying to retool the foreign policy to be able to attract investment into the country. I think uh, his doctrine is about is what he called the 4D, uh, looking at uh, supporting uh, the, the democracy across the length and breadth of Africa, uh, ensuring that there is um, you know, development and uh, foreign direct investment coming to the country. And the other one is also paying attention to our diaspora and improving consular services that we offer uh, country and of course uh, the last one is demography using uh, the size of uh, the nation the, the population the young population using our, our, our numbers uh, to be able to make a case that Nigeria will be rep will be in the table at the highest level of representation of a whole lot of international organizations so that our voices can be heard so this is very clear as far as um, you know we are concerned mm. and uh, we are hoping that uh, you know that trajectory the president, uh, as you have seen, some of the shuttle diplomacy he has been involved in, you he, he, he can see that uh, he's uh, already uh, hit the ground running as far as foreign policy is concerned. I'm not uh, very uh, sure that after the, you know, the Supreme Court judgment, there will be more issues that will come, uh, that will come up. Uh, like I said, uh, there are 
uh, election issues, there are pre-election issues. When you find a pre-election issue, uh, you wait when, when it's time for mm -hmm. that, you, you deal with that. When there are elections, you deal with election issues. And by the time the Supreme Court gives its judgment, I'm sure uh, you know, all, all of this matter will, uh, will come to an end once all and right. for all. All right, so I intentionally asked that question again because, I mean, a lot of people would like to know how uh, diplomats will respond to the case now that Atiku has filed for admittance of the documents by the Supreme Court. Well, uh, like I said, uh, the diplomats have nothing to do with how the Supreme Court uh, will act. Uh, it is left for the Supreme Court to decide whether they are going to admit it or whether they are not going to admit mm. it. Even if Supreme Court admits it, you are also still going to prove to the Supreme Court that this is exactly what you want to do. However, it is whatever you're finding, you, you find, it is how you use it at the end of the day that matters. And like I said, diplomats are not involved in politics. I, I, I'm saying this to you again. Diplomats that are, not, that are in Nigeria, for example, representatives of other countries, they won't get themselves doubled into what's going on in Nigerian politics and vice okay. versa. Nigerian diplomats that are outside other countries also don't get themselves involved with what's going on in the politics of the country as well. So right. we respect those fine lines. We are there to improve relations at government level. Remember, it is the government that we're talking about, not necessarily the individual. The president of Nigeria is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not just, uh, you know, President Bola Mertinubu. It's the position that we're looking at. So at that level, you are looking at relations at, you know, at uh, every level, economic relations, if I'm here and I'm focused on economic diplomacy, for example, it means that I'm, I have to help Nigeria and Burundi improve the trade, their trade, not to get involved in whether the president of Burundi is qualified to be president or whether the opposition have a case in court. Absolutely no. Even at political level, we, we sign, uh, we have a uh, joint commissions, for example, which is basically a memorandum of understanding that uh, is established at government level to allow you know, a working relationship between those countries. None of these issues are, they are, they are dealt with at government level. They are policy issues and have nothing to do with, uh, you know, whatever an individual or whatever the politics of a country, you know, is all about. All right, so now that um, Atiku Abubakar has approached the Supreme Court, um, and I must reiterate that for the sake of explanation, what difference can this new evidence make on the case at the Supreme Court? I am not a lawyer, and um, I believe that even the commentary on this is out, is out of, uh, you know, it's, it shouldn't even be in the first instance. It is he is within his rights, uh, without a doubt. We are a, a, a law-abiding nation. Whatever you find, you take it to the court. That's the right thing to do. In fact, calling a press conference on it wasn't even necessary in the first instance. All you do is that you, you obviously, you know, whatever you have, you take it to the court. Uh, but from my layman understanding of whatever these issues are, I don't know that the court will admit new evidence at this level. Uh, Supreme Court is not a court of evidence, uh, you know. But like I said, he will apply, he will try. And uh, we are urging him to do so. That's basically the hallmark of democracy. Uh, the hallmark of democracy is that we must allow people to exhaust whatever it is that they find. And the court will take a decision. And after that point, we will. that's why you, it's at the tribunal level first. And if you disagree, whatever it is that you have at the tribunal, you also go forward. He's not the only one, uh, you know, in the Supreme Court. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the flag bearer of the Labour Party, His Excellency Peter B, is in the, it's also at the Supreme Court. And I think APM have also gone to the Supreme Court. So everybody's there at the Supreme Court. I think all of the, the three parties that had issues at the tribunal have all filed, uh, you know, to the Supreme Court. So we wait for to see the outcome. I'm not uh, against any information he has taken to mm -hmm. the court. He's well within his right to do so. And we support him to be able to do so. Uh, so that this is how we build and develop our democracy. Uh, if the court, uh, you know, there are, you know, maybe the lawyers or the Justices know the ground for which they will either accept or reject. I won't comment on it. All I'm saying is that he should do the right thing by filing whatever he has to the Supreme Court, and then we will respect the Supreme Court decision at the end of the day. All right, so talking about what is right or not, I mean, Atiku says this is a moral issue, and some people have argued that he has no such standing because uh, those who live in glass houses do not throw stones. Uh, what's your take on this? Well, uh, politicians will always... Uh, politicians. Uh, I mean, he's a very respectable individual in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, he's a politician, and so are so many of us that are involved. What we find is that uh, uh, 
uh, we will look for whatever advantages we will find out there and then we'll use it to the maximum or to the best, uh, you know, to be able to uh, get the kind of traction we choose to get. Uh, however, I had the former vice president talk about the fact that uh, he doesn't support Muslim Muslim tickets. Uh, from his press conference, I obviously saw that he's had a lot of issues uh, with Mr. President, you know, dating back as long as he mentioned them and all of that. Obviously, uh, you don't want anybody to come into that. Uh, they are friends, they will resolve at some point. But my view is very simple. Uh, I mean, the Vice President talked about the fact that Nigeria is not ripe for, for a Muslim Muslim ticket. Uh, I agree, you know, but again, I will also put the question to say, uh, okay, it's because Muslim Muslim ticket obviously has won the elections, uh, but even if it didn't win the elections, for example, is it also right, you know, for, for a Northerner to be president and for another, not, for eight years and for another Northerner to even attempt to become president for probably another eight years? So we, we are saying on the one hand that, uh, you know, Muslim Muslim ticket is not right for the country uh, due to the nature of diversity we have in the country. But are we saying that people from the southern part of the country also don't deserve to be president after an eight years presidency of uh, the northern, a northerner in Nigeria? I mean, a Fulani man for that instance. So after one Fulani man finishes, another Fulani man takes over. Is that now correct? Or is that now right for us in Nigeria? Like I said, politicians will use whatever they choose to, you know, to uh, project their cause. Uh, but what we continue to do is to remind Nigerians again that politicians will do whatever they need to do. Uh, and uh, at this point in time, the most legitimate way of getting yourself to become president or to get into any political office is through the elections. And uh, looking for technical issues, uh, as far as I'm concerned at this point, doesn't make a lot of sense. And he indeed called uh, for coalition for quite a lot of other parties to join him in the struggle. I'm sure you already have had the answers from the people he has called. NMPC have dissociated themselves, and I think also so is Labour Party as well. This is your fight. Go ahead with it. We also have our own cases, and we are pursuing them. What it basically means is that they are saying, no, everybody should carry their cross at this particular point in time. So I, 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 I will not uh, you know, come for his juggler for saying what he has said, but it's left for me to also sit down and also you know, go through, think about what he has said, and also find defenses and also put forward other questions that Nigerians will also consider. Uh, you know, so that, that's basically what, we are, what I see from all of this. There's uh, nothing wrong with him trying to push his case. It's, it's fine. It's, it's normal. It's democracy. Ooh, that's how we strengthen our democracy. Uh, but at the end of the day, we will also remember, Nigeria should also be told that politicians will always do whatever they need to do to advance their cause. You can say Nigeria is at risk. You can say Muslim Muslim ticket is not right. You can say. But at the end of the day, uh, what I felt is that that coalition that they are trying to build in Supreme Court would have been much more beneficial if they built it before the elections. I mean, he ran. A few other people ran. So... The three of them, NMPP, Labour Party, PDP, put together would have been able to upstate the president, I believe, based on the numbers we had. But they didn't actually come together. So I wonder what this coalition, afterthought coalition, will bring to them at the end of the day. But of course, you can see that they have actually said, no, everybody should carry their cross. Whatever you find, take it to the court. Luckily, um, uh, the Labour Party and NMPP and even the APM that are in court never went to Chicago State University, so they can't even mm -hmm. add this as part of what they are taking to the Supreme Court. Whatever grounds they have, they should go ahead with it. And whatever grounds His Excellency, the former Vice President, has found, they should also go ahead with it. But what is important is that once the Supreme Court gives the ruling, that brings an end to this, and then we can move on and wait for the next round of elections. All right. Ambassador, let's take a break. I've been speaking with the Nigerian Ambassador to Burundi, Dr. Elijah Oyagwa. Uh, tonight, we're taking another look at President Tinubu's academic record as Atiku heads to Supreme Court. When we return, we'll move on to other issues. Please stay with us. To politics tonight, and I've been speaking with the Nigerian ambassador to Burundi, Elijah Oyagba, for discussion on President Inubu's academic record as Atiku heads to Supreme Court. All right, Ambassador, let's move on to other issues. As the ambassador to Burundi, what has the country achieved in Burundi-Nigeria relations? Well, thank you very much. Um, it's, uh, you know, all ambassadors have been recalled at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are very grateful to the president for giving us the opportunity to represent our country at this level. You know, it's always a privilege uh, to be called out of... Uh, over 200 million people to ask to carry your nation's flag and ensure that, uh, you know, you improve on the relations. And Nigeria-Burundi relations dates back to 2007. And uh, from then till now, I came in here 2021. 
And uh, the first we did was to ensure that there's a joint commission between Nigeria and Burundi. And this joint commission was basically, uh, you know, uh, took, uh, you know, took effect at 90 days that I arrived in Bujumbura. And in establishing that, uh, inaugurating that joint commission, we, we signed a couple of uh, uh, bilateral agreements, or what we refer to as memorandum of understanding. We established MOU on political consultation. We established MOU on um, education cooperation between Nigeria and Burundi. And we haven't just signed these MOUs, we've also begun implementation of those MOUs so that we don't just sign documents without implementing them. And the, on the political ground, we've had, uh, you know, uh, the president of Burundi visit Nigeria twice in the last uh, seven months or thereabouts. We've also had, uh, you know, high level visits between both countries. I mean, the former vice, the former first lady of Burundi of Nigeria was here in Burundi. The, the present first lady of uh, Burundi has been in, in Nigeria, has been to Nigeria like, um, four times in the last one year or thereabouts. So we've also had visits at ministerial level, visits at the parliamentary level across both countries. So we are doing well. The political relations between both countries is uh, at its all-time high. Uh, on the education ground that I talked about, uh, we have uh, uh, established uh, a Nigerian-owned university here in Burundi. Uh, we have also ensured that uh, there are exchange of programs between the University of Burundi and some universities in Nigeria. University of Uyo and Nandesco University signed an MOU to exchange lecturers, and the lecturers have also been here, and you know, they are changing lecturers and students and research as the case may be. Uh, on the economic front, which is uh, actually uh, our focus here, we, before I came to Burundi, there was actually no economic relations, there was no trade relations between Nigeria and Burundi. Uh, one of the things we did was to establish the Nigerian-Burundi uh, Business Council, which is, which is chaired by a Nigerian businessman, and uh, the vice chair is... Um, a businessman from Burundi. We established this uh, because it was important that as the cooperation is happening at the government level, we also needed to establish a platform that will allow the private sector to also find expression. So we established this business council and on, 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 on the backdrop of that, we organized the maiden edition of the Nigeria Burundi Business Summit. And we had uh, a lot of businessmen from Nigeria, from education to agriculture, to infrastructure, to uh, uh, entertainment to fashion all come to Burundi here sometime last year and then they sat down and discussed uh, a Nigerian company is helping a Burundian company right now to help them in agriculture uh, capacity development. A, there is also a memorandum of understanding or a contract has also been given to allow a Nigerian company to supply about a million palm siblings to Burundi and they are starting the first tranche of 105,000 in the next 90 days. We are also, uh, we, there are also Nigerians that have invested here in Burundi in their entertainment and their, in their tourism sector as well. So this, uh, there is also a, a Nigerian company that has also signed an MOU to provide Burundi with uh, raw materials for fertilizer, urea and some of the mat raw materials that are used for fertilizer. So this actually was not happening before now. And you can see that uh, we have made a lot of impact in, the economic, uh, in economic diplomacy. Moving on from economic diplomacy, we've also had a lot of um, Nigerians visit Burundi. We've ensured that on the consular side that there's no Nigeria in prison in Burundi. Anytime they run into trouble, we get involved and try to provide them those services. We've had more Nigerians uh, come to Burundi in the last two and a half years. We've also ensured that Nigerians can visit Burundi with visa on arrival. Before I came, you have to go to their embassy in Abuja and apply for visa and wait for that visa to be issued before you buy your flight ticket. But as of today, we have ensured that Nigerians can travel. You can buy your ticket right now and head to Burundi and get your visa on arrival. We've also had a lot of uh, work in the sports development. We've, we have Nigerian Embassy has been honored by the Athletic Federation of Burundi for the role we have played in sports development here. We've also been honored by the Burundi businessmen in France for some of the things that we have done with respect to economic diplomacy and helping in bringing investments uh, in, uh, in ensuring that there are investments that are going both ways. Uh, particularly when it comes to these trade relations that, uh, that we have worked on. And uh, obviously, the next person that is coming will try to build on what we've done. We've also received an award from the tourism sector as well for some of the things that we have done in trying to also uh, contribute to the tourism of the country. So we have uh, you know, done a lot of work uh, between uh, both countries. And I can tell you, uh, without any iota of doubt, that uh, Nigeria-Burundi relations is at its all-time high. And we are hoping that the next ambassador that will come will build on some of the things we've achieved while we're here. 
All right, so still talking about Nigeria-Burundi relations. I'm very interested in this uh, consular issues. So, I mean, now that all of the all ambassadors have been recalled, what steps have you put in place to ensure that your efforts do not go in vain? Well, um, you know, the way an embassy runs, an embassy doesn't run with just an ambassador. There are other what we refer to as home-based officers. That's, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, professionals that have been trained in this area that are also in the mission. Uh, you know, they are, we have a political desk in every embassy. We have the economic desk. We also have the consular desk as well. These desks are actually manned by uh, very experienced uh, officers, and we've worked together as a team. All of the things we've achieved here has been achieved as a team. So I actually don't think that there will be any vacancy at this point in time. But I'm also hoping that whatever we have done, they are there on record, will also I will chronicle them and ensure that there is a smooth handover uh, between myself and the next person that is coming. And uh, in any case, what you what you do, which is what I did before I came to Burundi, was that I had a constant communication with the head of mission that was that I took over from. So he will he was able to guide me, give me some basic information that I need to be able to help me settle down. I will also be doing that for the next person that is coming to ensure that uh, he continues to build on what we have done. So there shouldn't be any vacancy. But even between now, when another ambassador is also appointed, there are staff that are on ground and they have been part of all the successes we've achieved that I believe that uh, there will be enough to be able to provide and cover for whatever lapses that they may are, that, 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 that they are likely to be. All right, so looking at how President Tinubu has kicked off, in what ways do you think the president should retool his foreign policy? Well, um, the, the truth is that uh, we've, uh, you know, the foreign policy of every president basically is the, the, the he's the principal foreign affairs minister. Uh, to be honest, it's uh, his uh, responsibility to uh, outline what and what he intends to achieve. In the last administration, for example, uh, it was very clear to everybody that um, the, uh, uh, you know, Africa unity, you know, the, our foreign policy is centered around the unity of Africa. Nigeria first, its role in trying to ensure that Africa is united, its neighbors, and so on and so forth. And I don't think that there is so much, uh, you know, departure from what has happened in the past. Historically, every president will come and obviously outline the things that they need to be able to achieve. But a few things, uh, you know, while maintaining the, 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 the leadership position in Africa, which is obviously what the president has set out to achieve, he has also added a few things, which is things like uh, the, our, our, our diaspora. You know, the president wants to pay attention to our diaspora. And he's saying that he needs us to use our diaspora to also drive our development. There can be technology transfer. There are, no nation in the world has ever developed without their diaspora. So he's hoping and uh, uh, you know, trying to ensure that uh, the, his foreign policy reflects that uh, attention that is supposed to be paid. You know, a lot of us, you, over the years, you would have seen so much happening, you know, in so many embassies. Some people are looking for their passport. They can't. Some people are going there, coming back. Just quite a lot has been going on. And uh, lately, you can also see that there was a video of... Uh, so the point is that more often than not, some of these issues are even... Uh, misrepresented. For example, there was uh, a video someone made a couple of uh, you know uh, weeks ago saying that Nigerians are in Ethiopia, that they are in prison, they are about to kill them and all of that. I'm happy the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has actually rebooted that information. But what is important is that this is the age of information. So people need to get information and on time as well. Uh, so that uh, at the end of the day, whatever information they have, because if Nigerian, if a Nigerian living in, uh, that is living abroad goes to the embassy and requests for a particular service. Even if he's not getting that service, that information needs to get to him as quickly as possible. And he doesn't have to come over and over and over again. So there is that part that deals with improved consular services for Nigerians that are living abroad. There's also now the part that also deals with development, which is whatever we need to do, let us do it to be able to attract foreign direct investment and portfolio investments to Nigeria. There's also an attention that has also been paid to the demography, because Nigeria is a big country. Nigeria is a country of over 250, 220 million people. So what that means is not just a number. That is the size of markets. That is the size of the economy. That means that these people will eat, they will clothe. There are so many things that you know, the, the, our size can give us. We can, we can ask for to become a member 
of G20, for example. We can ask to become a member of the BRICS nation, for example, because if South Africa is there, Nigeria is bigger than South Africa, both in terms of population, the size of the market, the size of the economy, and so on and so forth. So why can't we get there? So that's the idea that the president is trying to push using our numbers to ensure that we get to every international organization and be able to engage at that level to be able to attract development to the people of Nigeria. What makes a great nation? A great nation is great by five things, basically. Number one is the size of land. Number two is your population. Number three is the nature of technology you have. Number four is having a water body. And number five is diplomacy. So you can see that even at diplomacy, is actually not doing badly as well. So that's obviously one of the things that this Ministry of Foreign Affairs is set up to do so that we can help drive whatever domestic policies that the president wants to drive in the, in the international arena. Basically, your foreign policy is how you want to drive your domestic policy in the international arena. And I believe that uh, the president is up, up for it. And uh, we, we hope that uh, at the end of the day, uh, all of the objectives will be achieved uh, to ensure that Nigerians are better off than where we are at the moment. All right. So let's put this into proper perspective. Uh, in the last four months, the president has embarked on economic diplomacy to attract foreign investment to the country. How will you describe it? No, that's very good. Uh, you, you remember I can chronicle President's international trip. Uh, the first was to Guinea-Bissau after he became president, where he was made the head of ECOWAS. And then the next also was... Um, you know, uh, that's actually, after, shortly after that, there was this Niger crisis. The next was uh, the trip to uh, G G20 that happened in India. And then from there, he shuttled to United Arab Emirates. And of course, uh, you know, he was invited to attend the G20. And at uh, the G20, you know clearly that uh, what happens there is these are the big economies in the world. And uh, for Nigeria to be present there, it, it, it tells a lot because it's not every African president that was invited. And I believe that... Uh, the president came back with specific um, commitment towards uh, di foreign direct investment. Some of the, them are already, some of the Indians are already in Nigeria, and they also committed to improving on the level of their investment in Nigeria as well. Uh, he also passed through uh, UAE trying to address some of the issues uh, that uh, both countries have had, particularly on the consular uh, area, you know. And uh, that issue hasn't been put to bed yet, but clearly there's work in progress. Uh, the president also sent uh, a representation. I think it was the vice president that represented him at uh, the BRICS uh, conference in South Africa as well, uh, where we are also uh, we are in attendance. And also, I'm sure that these are the nature of um, uh, engagement that the president wants Nigeria to be represented in. And there's nothing that uh, you know is wrong with us even uh, pushing to become a member of the BRICS nation, because uh, you can see the nations that are there, Brazil, Russia, China, South Africa, and India. Yeah. Uh, we can also get there as well. And uh, uh, shortly after that, there was also G77, which is basically developing a group of uh, uh, developing economies with China. I think the vice president as well was uh, in China, in uh, Cuba. Sorry, uh, in one of these countries, I think it was Cuba, yes, uh, for the G77 summit. And after that, the president attended UNGA. Uh, where, obviously, uh, he also delivered a speech, uh, you know, to his first uh, uh, speech to, to, to the General Assembly of the United Nations. So I, I believe that it is a step in the right direction. And I believe that uh, some of the things he's done so far is a step in the right direction, but we'll have to build on it. Mm -hmm. There's no two ways about that. Uh, he, the points are very clear. The doctrine is very clear. The agenda is very clear. So we are hoping that uh, we'll give it the best shot so that Nigerians can improve on whatever we have with respect to foreign policy and as well as attracting development to the Nigerian people. All right, Ambassador. So before I let you go uh, this evening, what areas do you want the president to focus on in developing the country? It's not about, you know, you know the, the truth is that uh, there are no specific area I'm going to, you know, when everybody is running for elections, uh, there's a renewed hope document, which is a public document. And that document, I studied it, we carried it, we campaigned with it. It cuts across a lot of sectors, from agriculture to technology to dealing with women to education to health to still development to all of these ministries that we, we, we have, you know, down to monetary policy and all of these issues. So I believe, you know, governance is a basket. A basket, uh, you carry everything in that basket. So I'm hoping that all of the things that the president promised. For example, the promise, the president made it very clear that if he, be, if he wins the election, 
He's going to have a lot of young people represented in his cabinet. That is a promise that has been kept today. He promised that a certain number of women are going to also be represented in his cabinet. That promise has been kept today. He also promised certain number in terms of development, in terms of economic growth. You know, so clearly, I'm hoping that you know you don't just focus on one sector. Yes, there's insecurity in the country. Yes, there is hunger. Yes, we need to find a way to develop our infrastructure. Yes, we need to also find a way to ensure that the suffering, you know, uh, fuel subsidy has been removed. We need to begin to uh, ramp up the pace for providing palliatives uh, to the country. Yes, these are all the things that require attention. I won't even select and be say it is this that is more important than this. But by and large. The responsibility of government primarily is to ensure security of lives and property. So we expect that there will be a lot of improvement, first and foremost, because a lot of other development indices will come in at the point where there is security. So security seems to be the bottom line. It seems to be the thing that everybody needs to be able to get on with the things that with other dividends of democracy. So I believe that a lot is happening in this regard. You can see there are a lot of security challenges in some parts of the country. In fact, in most parts of the country. So I believe that a lot of work is but there is no... The president must carry all the bags together. Every promise he has made to Nigerians, we are looking forward to ensuring that uh, the president comes, to, comes good with all those promises. All right. Ambassador Elijah Oyagba, uh, Nigerian Ambassador to Burundi, thank you so much for joining us this evening, sir. Uh, it is an thank honor you. and we really appreciate it. And I look forward to more conversation with you. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Thank you.